Okay, we've got something I'm very much looking forward to today. So if you remember, I don't know, it was a few months ago, we got a new wooden, all wood, no electronics humidor from a company called Glenn Craig. And I really like that humidor. I didn't have a use for it, but Glenn Craig uh, reached out to me and they said, hey, we've been following what's going on on YouTube. They knew that our account had gotten deleted. My fault, YouTube did not ban us, although they have really tried. But Glenn Craig reached out to me and said, hey, we've been following along on your YouTube channel and we're coming out with an electronic humidor. Would you like to do an unboxing and review? And I said, you know what? I think so, I think so. So we're gonna do that today. Before I go into it though, I will tell you, when you're looking at your humidors, where is it gonna go in your house? I get these questions a lot about fans, about placement, do I need heating and cooling? Do I, you know, all these kinds of questions. And for years and years and years, all I had was just plain, regular old wooden humidors. And if you are keeping your humidors in an interior room in your house, you could probably get away with using a just regular old standard wooden humidor because in the interior of your house, temperatures and humidity probably aren't going to fluctuate a whole lot. However, if you are in a place that gets really hot, like Texas, our AC units run a lot in the summer. And when we had snowmageddon and all this stuff, we our heaters ran for 20 out of 24 hours. So. When you're looking at, do I want a wooden humidor or do I want an electronic humidor? Think about where you're gonna place it. And honestly, if you spend the extra 100 bucks to get an electronic, thermoelectric, heating and cooling type of humidor, that's probably cheaper than the impact of keeping your house warmer or cooler than it normally would, or keeping your basement or a specific room warmer or cooler than the rest of your house. So, yeah, some of these electronic humidors, I don't know how much this one costs. I think it's like 350, I don't know. So yes, are they more expensive? Yes, absolutely. But is the expense difference cheaper than what it would cost you to run your AC or heater more just to keep your cigars in good condition? Now I will say if you haven't checked out my humidor, winador build video, I do have the compressor on and off throughout the day when it gets hot to keep it cool and that's a great solution but i ended up putting about 1200 dollars into that thing but it wasn't purpose built for cigars this glenn craig i'm pointing at the box here this glenn craig is purpose built for cigars so let's take a look i'm very excited let's roll the intro and we'll get into it Hey guys, I'm Ellery Wells from CigarScore.com, the best place to find and rate where to smoke cigars. That's cigar lounges, cigar-friendly bars and restaurants, cigar retailers where you can't smoke in there, but you can buy your cigars there. They're all over the United States, and you can find them over at CigarScore.com. What we also have is a lot of unboxing videos. We get introduced to a lot of humidors. We, we do a lot of unboxings for monthly cigar subscription clubs, and people come to us and ask, what kind of humidor I should buy. I was just texting with somebody on Facebook the other day, what do you think of this versus this? Why do you like this one versus that one? And we try to help people make educated decisions about where they wanna spend their money. So today I'm going to introduce you to this Glenn Craig humidor. I don't know if it has a model number, we'll find all that out, but let's crack this cardboard box open and see what they sent us. Okay, this is how it came from, I don't know, UPS or whatever. We're just going to open this up as much as possible. I think there's a, a box. Oh, no. There, yes, there is a box inside, but it looks like it might have been compromised. So it looks like the outer box is what uh, got damaged. And this box down here is probably what uh, you would ship from just if you bought it from Amazon. And I think that's where they wanted to sell it. I'll put a link in the description below the video. So let's get this out. Uh, it is upside down. So let me flip this over. And there we go. Uh, you can see just a little bit here, Glenn Craig. I don't know that it has a model number. It says here on the barcode, Glenn Craig Electronic Cigar Humidor Cabinet Temperature and Humidity Control 35 liter. 
this side up. Well, it was definitely shipped upside down. Um, it is 40 pounds with the box, 30 pounds, so it's not super heavy. BW35S, we'll probably put that in the description, BW35S. Maybe you can see that right there. Uh, they got the skew. All right, let's get this thing cut. Guess I didn't need it on the table here. Let's do this, get the cardboard out of the way and we're just gonna do, hopefully I can just lift this out. It is only 29 pounds, right? While I'm doing this, one of the things I liked about the original Glenn Craig, or the wooden one, is that it, uh, they put some nice artistry, some nice detail into the wooden shelves that other people just don't seem to do. And I really like that. I like some of the features. So hopefully they have carried over that attention to detail into this one as well. We've got the stiff cardboard topper here. Pretty standard packaging for protection and all that. Let's see. All right, let's see if I can just lift this out of here. And I can't, because I am super freaking strong. All right, box is empty. Let's get this out of the way. And here we go. At this point, it is it is narrow and tall. What was this, 35 liters? Let's get this some of this stuff out of the way. And there you go, to protect the glass. Here's another, ooh, this is gonna be, Okay, so already uh, it smells good, but one thing that I don't love is the hinge here. So you gotta open the door this much wider. Some of them are worse. Some of them you gotta have your door like way open, but you have to open your door. You can't put this flush against the wall. But I like this attention to detail right here. Let's have a seat and we're gonna go through this thing together. Okay, man, I feel like I look so small uh, next to these. So after doing a handful of these humidor unboxing videos, whatever you want to call them, I kind of have some ideas of what I am going to look for. Um, just kind of random though. We've got the plug here in the back. Uh, just pretty straightforward. There's no tray. We've seen some trays here in the back for water and all that other stuff. So that's not there. Let me... Um, let me get this thing uncoiled. But the reason why I brought that up is, you know, you kind of want a long cord. I've had to put mine into extension cords and all that kind of stuff just to get them where I want them and the wall plug isn't there. So pretty decent length. We'll plug that in here in just a second. But if I can get the, uh, the camera angle here, you know, this door is going to open the wrong way, isn't it? Let me switch sides here. All right, there we go. And hopefully we can both see what we're talking about here. One thing, I don't know that this is a deal breaker, but I'll point it out. This glass is clear. It's not mirrored. On the need one, it is, I don't think you can really see what's what's inside on this one. So let's go ahead and not again, I don't think that's a deal breaker. Uh, let's pull this out, set it aside. And what is this? There's like a metal thing here. I don't know what this is. If you know what this metal deal is, maybe it holds the glass in. It's taped down here, get that out of the way. But do you know what this is? Anybody want to tell me what this is? This little gray metal strip. Okay, so like I said, you can, yeah, you can totally see my hand in here if I'm looking through the, the camera. Um, and we don't even have it uh, lit up on the side yet. So I, I, again, don't think it's a deal breaker, but other companies have talked about, you know, it's got a mirrored finish and maybe it helps with the UV and all that stuff. I don't know. The handle here, there's no lock, which I don't lock mine anyway. Um, I can get my fingers in here. That's, that's kind of a plus. So they did say, now I'm gonna answer this question and I gave them this suggestion. I don't know if they had it before, but I told them that you guys like these. And I do too. Um, this is a point of contention is when you put your cigars on the tray just like this, they tend to roll off, but we have an extra slot. It'd be kind of nice if they gave us, I don't know how well you can, can see in here, but this drawer can go right into this slot right into this slot right here, and you can you know, keep your cigars kind of like that. So we have an extra space here. It would be kind of nice if they would have given us these extra shelves, but they, they didn't. So we're gonna take that one out. Uh, let's take this one out. And really how you're gonna get, 
what do we got here? The same, oh, well this is all very interesting. So instead of the standard cup or that little bin, they gave us one with foam. So we're gonna take that out. That's a nice little thing. We've got the uh, instruction booklet here. This humidification system was tucked right in under here. So this is an interesting choice. A lot of companies have put, this is actually a really nice fan. So most of them settle with these fans. Let's get this out of the way so you can totally see. So most people rely on this one fan and uh, I can't tell you how big that is for all of their circulation. And then down here in the bottom, they've got the water tray and that would normally, this is metal. That's nice. But they've got their water tray for any excess water to drip into, which I don't remember who it was, but one company even put it back here. So if you have too much water in there, it will drip uh, and not over humidify your cigars. However, if this thing is designed to sit under there, maybe that's meant to collect it. So anyway, getting back to the fan issue, and sorry, I, I don't mean to bore you with this stuff, but this is kind of important when you're talking about hundreds or thousands of dollars worth of cigars. You wanna know how things work so you don't open this up one day and you're like, why are my cigars crispy dried out or why are they soggy like a, a, a freaking sponge? So this is another fan but it looks like we have the fans and ventilation blowing air to the front, and we also have one here circulating air up and down, which I've never seen in a humidor before. However, one of the things I wanted to point out, because this is here, you can't put boxes on the bottom, and because this slides in right above it, you might have humidification issues on the cigars that are right right above this fan. There's, there's almost no space there, so that's kind of an interesting choice there. I don't know if it'll be a problem. I don't know if it won't be a problem. So going back to the drawers here, um, they are going to make more of these and sell them on Amazon. I told them that you guys request that. Uh, I see it in the Facebook groups and forums and everything that you want more of these flat face things here because it's got the sides to hold your cigars and they won't roll off. And you know, when you got the door closed, it does look kind of cool. Of course, you've got a, a massive glare there, but um, so I wish they would have included one more shelving unit in here just to take up this extra missing space. I, because of, and here you get into that issue where you gotta have that door open. Um, because of how this is, the rails at the bottom and it goes up, I generally like to put this shelf at the top to maximize the space and then use the, actually I could probably take one of these shelves out and use it for boxes, but this is also very narrow. So you're gonna have to measure your boxes and try it. And then this giant fan here, which could be a good thing, is gonna prevent you from putting a whole lot of boxes in there, but not that you would want to, but you could probably take this thing out if you wanted to, because there's just your regular screws right there. So before we get too far, let's take a look at this humidification system right here. So like I said, this was slid under that big old fan. So this is, this is just your normal, it's not the foam, it's that, that honeycomb stuff that helps water evaporate. We've seen this in uh, raging humidors. We've seen this all over the place. And there's a plastic film in here to probably keep that. Um, okay, this is how it's going to work. Instead of just keeping a water basin, you fill this up and I bet that's why it goes right under this big old fan, either under it yeah, it's gonna have to go under it and then the fan circulates your humidity. Let's put this back in and see how that works. So, yeah, it just goes right there and I guess, um, I don't know why you need this handle right here. Uh, like I said, these are those, those honeycomb things. You can see that you've probably seen that all over the place. You fill this up with water halfway. I might recommend using some, some humidification beads, but you just slide this right in there, but it still is going to keep you from putting a box right here. 
And then you don't want to block the, the fan, even though it is a nice idea. You might be better served putting this somewhere else, but you want your water, if it's spilled, you want it to be on the bottom so it drains. You don't want to put this up, but Glenn Craig, my, my feedback here is you have basically eliminated the bottom six inches or so that's not six inches that might be six inches right there you've basically made from here down something that is unusable so there's a lot to like put that shelf right back in there there's a lot to like but i think we still got some work to do let's turn it on and take a look at the electronics real quick all right i'm gonna plug this in and you're gonna see it probably before i do because i'm gonna be back there plugging it in All right, so it did beep. I don't know if you heard that, but there's also a power button here. So it beeped, the lights, the LED lights flashed, and then they went off. So there we go, we just turned it back on. So there you go, we just turned it back on, and the fan just turned on. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but the fan just turned on. Let's see. We can do, okay, so here is the, oh, oh, all right. I do like this big plus here, Glenn Craig. It does not rely only on that tiny shitty light up there. This is a light bar. Very excellent, look at that. That is freaking cool. Bonus points, Glenn Craig, style points there for having edge illumination. So I guess this is the light as well as the, when we're talking about this icon right here, it's, yeah, that one. Um, it does the, let's see, do we need to hold it? No. Light, how does this work? Celsius or Fahrenheit? I want it to be, it's on Celsius, so 22 degrees. How do I switch this? Okay, hold it down for what? Was that five seconds? Excellent, so the humidification there, uh, we can change. Okay, so the, the controls are a little bit confusing to start off with, which is interesting that the light's still on when the humidor itself is off. That's kind of an interesting choice, but let's turn this back on. And then if you want to cycle through all of these, you just keep pressing the power button. So I guess that will be to set your humidification. You can see that right there, humidity and temperature. So you can set your humidification. I'm gonna put it at 67 and we're gonna hit that. Um, this is the current reading when none of them are flashing. So right now it's 46% humidity, which is probably what it is in the house. So we're gonna to do that. The temperature is flashing and I want to keep my cigars at 67 degrees and I want to keep the humidity also at 67 and I didn't touch anything so it went off. So sorry for maybe the camera's a little bit shaky but I'm leaning at an angle and my back hurts so hopefully that is a good descriptor of what's going on. So again to reiterate to adjust these hit the button up down up down whatever Hit it again to go to the next one, up, down, up, down, and then hit it again to kind of cancel that out. And then this button, for the most part, is the light, and then you can hold it down to change that to Celsius. One, two, three, four, five, okay. Four seconds, three seconds, five seconds, something like that to switch it back over to Fahrenheit. One thing I am gonna check here before we move on to the next thing here is I want to adjust this. I'm gonna see how far it goes because I have one of these that's very uh, inaccurate, don't worry. The, the new air is probably the most accurate. The other ones, one's like five or six degrees, one's nine degrees off. So I wanna know if I need to change this. So 59 degrees is the coldest I can make it. So if it was nine degrees off, that means I could keep my cigars at 68 degrees. But we go back up. If it's off in the other direction, how high can I make it? Oh, 72. Now I think this is not a, this is not a Glenn Craig issue. I think this is just the nature of these tiny refrigeration units. You know, why would you want to cool it down to, or why would you want it to be heated more than, uh, let's go back here to 72 degrees. Well, if your thermometer's off, 
I'm going to need to keep it warmer than what you think is, is 72. So I'm going to set this back here to 67 and 67, and I'm going to assume that that is, is accurate. One more time, lights on, lights off. And let's see if you can, I'm going to put the mic real close. So I'm standing here at, at not even arm's length. Could you, can you hear the fan? I can hear it. I don't know if the microphone will, will hear it. Open the door and I'll switch microphones to the one that I'm wearing and talking into versus the one on the camera to see if you can hear this fan. I don't know how well you'll be able to hear that. It smells really good. This, this, there is no, no plasticky smell. It just smells good. So they did a good job of rinsing this out. Another well done for Glenn Craig. Can we see? Yeah, we're getting nice airflow here. You know, maybe you can see it blowing. I can see it, it, it blowing. So we're getting nice airflow. Um, I just don't know if that's gonna be useful, guys, because I guess technically this is for humidification circulation, humidity circulation, and this is maybe for the temperature and we're getting some airflow back here. So maybe they have different purposes and maybe this is the best solution they could come up with be, as opposed to just leaving you with a little water basin down here at the bottom. I think maybe just swapping out for Bovida packs or even if you use one of the small cigar oasis, you're gonna take up less space but you're gonna need to take this off and this is just a regular, regular screwdriver and then you would have to take something back off out there. Let me zoom in on that. You got more screws. So it looks like the fan is wired in over there. So you could probably just, it's probably got like that four pin screw that's on a, on a computer or something. Okay, do you see that? Do you see this? This drains back into this. So we were talking about that being in the back sometimes or being you know, in a little basin embedded in the back wall, that is good. So your extra humidity is gonna go back through the system into this, draining into your water basin. But you don't, you probably don't need the fan here where it is for that function to work. Don't hold me to that, read the instructions, but that would be my guess because with this here and or a shelf, let's say you don't have a shelf, if this wasn't here, you could put a box of cigars here or two boxes stacked horizontally, whereas this really gets in the way. Good job, guys. I like the idea. I like the fact that it's a big fan and it's gonna circulate a lot of air. Questionable though, since your cigar, the, the shelves go all the way to the side and they, for the most part, there is a little bit of room at the back there to circulate air, but I, you're, you're just kind of wasting space. The least amount of wasted space is going to be something like that right there. And uh, let's try that. Let's put that back in. I, I don't know what you would put here. I really don't know what you would put here. You could maybe move this up and get a box of cigars in there, but I think we're running out of, of space which is one of the problems that I had with the raging is the bottom third of that is used for the humidification, where on this one, it's probably the bottom, maybe 25%, eh, might be about a third. What do you think, is that about a third? Um, is, is unusable space due to a mechanical feature of, of the thing. So I don't always do this on the videos. I normally do it in the, in the text content, uh, but here's a few things that I remember liking about this. The lighting system, the edge lit lighting system is very cool. It means that you're not relying on the tiny wasted electronic light here at the top. You can actually see all of your cigars. Uh, what I don't like, we'll kind of maybe try it off if I can keep that all straight mentally. What I don't like is that you have to open the door past 180 degrees to get the drawers in and out. It's not far, it's not far, but you're gonna run into the seal here in just a, a, a little bit better. But again, Glenn Craig's not the only one that's done it this way. So good on the lighting, minor bad on the hinge. 
So good on the lighting, mm, not so good on the door hinge. Good on the fan at the bottom to circulate your additional humidity. Bad that it basically makes the bottom at least six inches, I would say, of this humidor. Unusable? Uh, I don't know. So I'm sure there's I'll, I'm sure there's more that I will will remember when we're going through the edit here. But um, let me see how much this thing costs. Okay, so this thing right now is uh, $299 for this. If I just do a, a search on Amazon, the King Chi 26L is $240. Modgar has a 35 liter on sale. Uh, normally it's $220 for $179. And I don't know if it has some of the extra features like the additional fan and the, the light bar and all that other stuff. So are those things worth $120? No. But I don't know that this one is necessarily so far out of line. What I would probably do is make is measure your space. I will try to put the dimensions of this in the description. And, you know, I've got some that are squatter, they're shorter, but they're wider. Is this the style that you want? These first impressions are, they're not dishonest because I'm doing my best to be honest with you. Uh, obviously, I've been somewhat critical of, of this, even though they did send it to me for a review. But the true test is how these things are going to function three and six months down the line. So that's why I always appreciate your comments and I try to answer them with information and impressions and feelings that I have at that time. So we are reviewing this, this just came out. I'm doing this at the middle slash end of March, 2024. And we'll see, I, I have not had humidification or temperature in, in this thing at all to know if these are accurate. Um, to measure the accuracy, you're gonna want something like the Govies. I will link to them in the description below. You're gonna want some independent humidity and temperature devices. You don't wanna trust that. And that's not a Glenn Craig thing. I've had ones that are several hundred dollars and they're not accurate. So you're gonna to wanna to be able to independently verify that. As far as the humidification goes, I will most likely take that out, the fan out and use Bovida packs just for the main purpose of, I can fit boxes of cigars going back. This is probably 18 inches deep, 20 inches deep. Actually it might say on the box. It is um, 28.7 by 23 by 13. So 28.7, uh, 23 deep, 36 point wide uh, ish. So um, you can put, I'll probably take that out just so I can put Bovida packs and boxes of cigars in there and maximize the amount of space without killing all of the airflow. So. 300 bucks, that's a lot of cigars, but if this holds true to humidity and temperature, which I also wonder if it's going to work with measuring the humidity if the fan is uninstalled. I mean, it may just be a reading and it won't be able to change anything. Theoretically, to change the humidity, you would uh, increase or decrease the fan speed. So I don't know, this is almost a tech review of this freaking humidor, it's 300 bucks. If you like the review and wanna check it out, you can click the link in the description below or you can go to cigarscore.com slash glencraig 35 l That's glencraig 35 l G-L-E-N-C-R-E-A-G. I don't even know if I'm spelling it right. Um, by the way, there's not some giant logo on it. The King Chi has a logo here. Um, there's very minimal branding. Yeah, cool. Go to cigarscore.com slash glencraig 35 l and you'll go right to Amazon to where you can buy this. Uh, if you have questions, ask them, and I will give you my honest opinion. I don't know if there's as much to like about this one as it was, there was about their wooden humidor. I think they did a really, really great job of that one. This one, it's another one. It's another one. I, the light though, the light is a good deal. That is something people have asked for on every humidor. 
And I put lighting on my wine and door build. You can check that one out. Again, it's one I mentioned before. I put lighting all the way around and it's cool looking and very functional. So that is, that is great. But I'm not sure this is just a, this is at this point seems like an also ran. But that's not a bad thing. So uh, I think when you're decide making your deciding points, look at the price per, per volume, I guess. Uh, last thing I'll point out, I did mention this before. These are pretty standard trays with the wood going this way. None of them are loose, which is good. Um, I've had some of them loose. Then when you look at this one, it is pitched a different way. So I don't, don't know why they did that, but just wanted to point that out because the other ones are not that way. This one is. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Ellery Wells from CigarScore.com, the best place to find and rate where to smoke cigars. I hope you liked this video. It was probably long. It's probably a little bit more technical than what you might have been looking for, but this is the way my mind thinks after having done half a dozen of these. So I hope you have an amazing day, and as always, Happy smoking.